From guest starring on a game show to dancing with a very famous American movie star, Winston Churchill's children lived quite the lives of their own. Winston Churchill and his wife Clementine had five children, a son and four daughters. The oldest, Diana, was born on July 11, 1909. Winston was reportedly known for spoiling his children, while Clementine acted as a disciplinarian. Though both of them sought to be more involved than their own parents had been, his career and her devotion to him still came first. And the series of nannies who attended to Diana and her siblings certainly had a mischievous brood on their hands. When she wasn't acting out, Diana was shy, even more so as she grew older. She was reportedly closer to her father than her mother, who often inadvertently wounded Diana with his sharp criticism. As an adult, Diana often accompanied and cheered up her dad while her mom was indisposed. She also shared his interest in politics. He doted on her, but he never saw her as a potential heir to his political career on account of her gender. While affectionate with her father, the introverted and sensitive Diana worried both of her parents. She had two marriages, both of which ended in divorce, though her union with politician Duncan Sands bore three children. Diana would predecease her father. She died by suicide in 1963 at the age of 54. Born in 1911, Randolph Churchill was every bit as misbehaved as his big sister. But where Diana developed into a nervous young woman, Randolph became known for alternately protecting and terrorizing his siblings. According to Josh Ireland, who wrote the book Churchill and Son, Randolph would confess the misdeeds he hadn't done just to show how meaningless punishment was to him. Winston was as indulgent with Randolph as he was with Diana and determined to make his boy a statesman in his mold. Randolph did serve in Parliament, though it took him four tries to get elected. His time as an MP overlapped with his service as an intelligence officer during World War II, but his cruelty, failed marriages, and odious personality were alienating even to his father. Winston even reportedly once said, I love Randolph, but I don't like him. Randolph's time in Parliament didn't extend past the war. Though unpleasant and reckless with money, he demonstrated a gift for writing that he turned into a successful career as a journalist and author. He also once appeared on the American game show, What's My Line? Are you yep. Mr. Randolph Churchill? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Among Randolph's literary accomplishments were two volumes in his father's biography. For all their strife, he idolized his father. He was working on a third volume when he died in 1968 at the age of 57. There were two especially notable women named Sarah in the Churchill family. The first was the Duchess of Marlborough, who helped advance the Whig agenda during the reign of Queen Anne. The second was the daughter that Winston Churchill nicknamed Mule thanks to her stubborn streak. Born in 1914, Sarah may very well have been her father's favorite child, but that affection didn't stop him from trying to prevent her first marriage or squabbling with her over the years. But one thing that Sarah's father didn't object to was her choice of profession. Both of her parents were happy for her to be an actor as long as she applied herself, and she had enough talent to make her way to the West End, Broadway, and Hollywood. She's probably best known for her role opposite Fred Astaire in the 1951 film Royal Wedding. I used to close my eyes and pretend I could dance all over the floor, walls, even the ceiling. If you ever learn to do that, I can get you a very good bookie. During World War II, Sarah put her career on hold to serve in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, and she also accompanied her father to the Yalta Conference. Despite being outgoing and popular, Sarah reportedly struggled to find personal happiness. Her heavy drinking frequently got her into legal trouble, and she lost her second and third husbands to suicide and a heart attack, respectively. Sarah died herself in 1982 at the age of 67 after a long illness. The fourth Churchill child was born on November 15, 1918, just after the end of World War I. She was named Marigold and nicknamed Duckadilly. Her father considered her an affectionate and attentive child, and she reportedly checked in on him every morning. Tragically, though, she wouldn't be around for long. In August of 1921, she fell ill with meningitis. She died of sepsis on the 23rd, just a few months shy of her third birthday. Marigold's heartbroken parents initially had her buried in London's Kensal Green Cemetery. But as other members of her family died, they were buried at St. Martin's Church in Bladen, and Marigold's last surviving sibling, Mary Soames, sought to have her relocated to join the rest of the family. Soames died herself in 2014, and the legal process to have Marigold moved was long and complex. But in 2020, she was reinterred with her family at St. Martin's, where she shares a headstone with her older sister, Sarah. Her headstone at Kensal Green remains as a listed monument. The youngest of Winston Churchill's children is widely believed to have lived the happiest life of her siblings. Mary Churchill, later known as Mary Soames when she married, was born on September 15, 1922. Much younger than her siblings, she was primarily raised at the Churchill's country home of Chartwell, with her mother's cousin as her primary caregiver. According to her New York Times obituary, her upbringing was full of bliss and colorful visitors. As a teenager, she began taking annual ski trips with her mother, and the two of them remained close. 
Mary enlisted in the Auxiliary Territorial Service during World War II without telling her father, and she saw action in London and the continent. She later traveled with her father to the Potsdam Conference. He once reportedly hoped to arrange her marriage to Prince Charles Count of Flanders and Regent of Belgium, but she instead married the politician Christopher Soames in 1947. They eventually had five children together. In 1979, Mary launched into a literary career with a biography of her mother. She went on to write several more books about her family, the last being A Daughter's Tale in 2011. She also served as chairman of the Board of Trustees for the Royal National Theatre and patronized various organizations connected to her family's legacy. She died on May 31, 2014 at the age of 91. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255.